So here's another rack that we just brought in, brand new. We unbox them, scan them into inventory, get all of the proper identification made, and then bring them into the lab, where our team begins to tear them down. Afterwards, they look a little more like this. So you can see that all the fans have been removed, and that enables the liquid cooling to circulate across the hash boards to increase the efficiency. It also enables us to run them faster, creating more Bitcoin for less energy. Hey, I'm Zach Bradford, CEO of CleanSpark. We're here today with a brand new S19 J Pro Miner. We're getting these ready for immersion cooling. I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough. So all of these systems are set up for air cooling. So these fans, they cool the chips. These fans here, they're smaller. They cool the power supply units. We're gonna be taking them all off. Once these are off and they're immersed, it's going to allow the fluids to flow across these systems to cool it instead of air, which is up to a thousand times more efficient. Hey everybody, Zach Bradford, CEO of CleanSpark. We're here. We now have an S19J Pro almost fully prepped to go into immersion cooling. All the fans removed and opened up so the liquid can get through. The last step, the secret sauce, is we're going to put software that's going to allow us to overclock. I'm here with Don Chenault, our Director of Mining Operations. Maybe tell us a little bit about overclocking. Yeah, so with the overclocking, we can take a, a out-of-the-box factory unit like this that would run 104 terahash, add the software, tune the uh, power and frequencies, and get up around 140 terahash, uh, more efficient than the stock unit. So when this is done, there will be thousands of these S19 J Pro machines hashing. The part that even now is kind of hard to get your head around is that these are completely submerged in oil. It allows us to increase the hash rate. Um, because we've removed the fans, it decreases some of the energy consumption, um, increases the efficiency, which means better return on investment, better profitability, and less energy. So now we're outside. Um, what you see behind me are the dry coolers. Those function like a, like a big radiator on your car. The big pipes that you see here are the supply and return lines. They take uh, water that goes through a heat exchanger beneath each of those tanks that you saw inside. And the water uh, goes through that heat exchanger and cools the oil to increase the efficiency of the miners. The warm water then comes out circulates through these tanks and returns inside. Hey, what's up everybody, it's Matt. So this is the first environment that I wanted to share here at Godby Road in College Park, Georgia. What you see behind me is one of our 48 mobile data centers. And you'll notice the background sound. That's three big fans that cool all, cool all the miners inside. I'll explain what that means later. But basically what we have here is 162 S19 J Pro miners um, that are operating and this particular load service is from the city of College Park, so it's greater than 90% nuclear. I'll explain more in the next one, but I hope you like it. Hey everybody. So this is a different part of our data center here in College Park. These particular mining units, these are mobile mining units, they utilize evaporative cooling. So on the opposite side wall, there's a material that's always soaked with water and it uses the evaporation to decrease the temperature to increase the efficiency of the miner. What you'll notice if you listen is that it's a much higher pitch sound. Um, what that comes from is on the other units, the container moves the air. On these units, each of those ASICs are actually in charge of moving all that air across the chipset. Hence the difference in noise and a little bit less efficient. Hey everyone. So here we are um, again at College Park, Georgia. And what you see behind me is a purpose-built structure for Bitcoin mining. The east and west walls are uh, evaporative cooling material. Um, and you can see we recapture any of the water and recirculate it. So it's pretty efficient that way. It's got large fans on the north and south that suck that air, the, the air through the evaporative cooling elements to create a much lower temperature inside the building. About a thousand miners inside here, also operating on nuclear power. 
Hey, I know Matt's been walking you around and seeing all of our other environments. Here we are, we're inside the data center. This is where we also have traditional data center clients currently. Um, what you have behind me is a portion of our 500 miners that we house inside. We don't have a lot of miners inside because this is our least efficient environment. Now, we're going to evaluate a lot of alternatives like we have in Norcross to make this more efficient in the future and actually utilize more of this space. Excited about the future and what it holds. So last, uh, certainly not least, we're inside the data center at, at College Park. So as you can see, we have traditional data center management business inside the facility. We have some mining with the idea that what we do outside is oftentimes more efficient than what we can do in a chilled environment. I mean, it's 60 degrees in here right now to accommodate the servers behind me. 